Hey, what's going on, you guys? This is uh, Pet Platypus here, and I'm going to be reviewing the new Godzilla film that came out just yesterday. And, uh, yeah, so just a couple things I want to say before the review really gets going. Uh, there's not enough things to talk about for, like, an entire spoiler video, but I will be talking about spoilers at the end of this video, so you don't have to worry if you haven't seen the movie. It'll be spoiler-free all the way up until that point, and then I'll tell you when I'm going to do spoilers. I'll tell you to stop watching or whatever. So that's all fine. And the other thing is, I am a huge Godzilla fan. I have... Whoa. Almost knocked something over. <laughs> I am a huge Godzilla fan. I only own, like, three Godzilla movies. The original, Invasion of Astro Monster, which if you haven't seen this movie, it has the Godzilla dance. Makes the entire movie worth it. If you haven't seen the Godzilla dance, watch the Godzilla dance on YouTube, because it'll be the greatest thing you've ever seen in your life. And I have Godzilla Final Wars, which was the last Godzilla movie until this movie came out. So I am a huge Godzilla fan, so with all of that said, let's get this review going. Okay, so when you're talking about the cast of this movie, which is what I usually start with, um, you've got Aaron Taylor Johnson, which for some reason I can mispronounce sometimes, so we're just going to call him Kick-Ass. You have Elizabeth Olsen, who plays his wife, and you have... Uh, Brian Cranston, who plays Aaron Taylor Johnson's father. You have Ken Watanabe, who is like this uh, Asian, he's like this Japanese scientist type guy who's been studying like Godzilla stuff. And then you have Godzilla himself. Yes, I count him as part of the cast. Um, so yeah, when we're talking about uh, kick-ass in this movie, Aaron Taylor Johnson, he is great in the movie overall, but his character is just kind of okay. This is a case where if you had put no-name actors who were delivering meh performances, they would really feel like boring characters. But because they're kind of just okay-ish characters that are being played by really good actors giving really good performances, it bumps them up a few notches, so the performances really help. And that goes for everybody in the movie. Uh, outside of Brian Cranston, who is, I guess I'll talk about him next, he just is a straight-up interesting character, a sympathetic character, who deli and he just delivers a powerhouse, phenomenal performance. And then you have Elizabeth Olsen, who plays uh, Aaron Taylor Johnson's wife, and she's fine in the movie. Uh, like I said, she gives a great performance, just like everybody else. She's not in the movie much, she's kind of just there. Uh, it pretty much, like, I'm going to get into the plot later, but... Aaron Taylor Johnson, I'm actually saying it properly. I can say his name, but sometimes it just comes out like, you know, um, if I'm talking like really fast or whatever. He's trying to get back to her, but like, you know, Godzilla stuff and monster stuff keeps getting in the way. So, you know, he can't get back to her and stuff, you know, and it's this big kind of thing. And it, it's nice, it's cool. And she does her part very well in the movie. Uh, then you have Ken Watanabe, like I said, he's a scientist who's been studying Godzilla and everything. He's mostly awesome because of his voice. Um, he just delivers a cool performance because of his just his attitude, his persona on screen is great. I'll talk about Godzilla uh, a little bit later on in the review, but... Yeah, I mean, that's pretty much your main four characters. It's a very simple plot, so I'm not really going to go into it too much. They pretty much just want Godzilla to do something that humans are not capable of doing. He needs, they need to make him do something. And like I said, there's also Kick-Ass trying to get back to his wife. And Brian Cranston is like, you know, you've seen in the trailers, he's kind of uncovering this conspiracy thing, but that's mostly in the beginning of the movie. Um, so yeah. And the last thing I'll say, uh, as far as cast and plot goes, because I kind of combined the two <laughs> just now, uh, Brian Cranston is not in this movie as much as the trailers make it look. He, he just isn't. The trailers make it look like he's in the movie throughout the entire thing. He's like the main character. He's not the main character. He's not in the movie as much as they make it look. That being said, he's still great in the movie and you can't really criticize a film because of how the trailers advertised it. You criticize the marketing department for that. So yeah, that's the uh, characters and the plot of the movie. Like I said, I don't want to go too far into the plot. I'll say a few more things at the spoiler review, you know. Because the trailers for this movie were pretty uh, secretive for the most part, so I don't want to, you know, spoil the plot or anything like that. Um, yeah, so next we'll just talk about action. So action was pretty much fantastic. I mean, the, fil the, the film is just shot beautifully. The cinematography and setup for shots is just awesome. There's great tension in certain scenes. It's just, it's awesome. And... When Godzilla is throwing down in the movie, he's he's fucking badass because he's fucking Godzilla. This movie, 
the director Garth Edwards knew Godzilla. They knew how to do Godzilla, and this is how you do him, and he's fucking awesome. Uh, every time he appears, he is badass. And that's another thing that I need to say. Uh, it's not a spoiler, but it is something you should know going into the movie. Godzilla's not in this movie as much as you might think. He's in, like, two, three scenes, and he's great in them, and they're not, like, super short or anything. Well, one of them kind of is. But, yeah, it's mostly about the people. Kind of like a Walking Dead thing, where, you know, Walking Dead is like a zombie series, but it's more about the people with zombies around. This movie kind of takes that approach. And like I said, luckily the performances can carry that through the movie. At least for me, they did. Um, so, yeah. Godzilla, when he does do his Godzilla stuff, it's really awesome. It's really badass. People were clapping in the theater that I was in. It was, I said this a couple times, it was fucking awesome. So, yeah, that's how action and cinematography went. Shot very well. Everything was, you know, cool on that front. So, yeah, characters, plot, action. What else do we want to talk about before we get into spoilers? Um, it was like the classic pet platypus stop and think while you're filming a review. Uh, no, I think that's it. Um, no, no, there's one other thing I want to talk about. The action in this movie is teased big time, and you need that's another thing you need to know going in. Aside from uh, Godzilla not being in the movie like as much as you might think, uh, you need to go in knowing that you're going to get teased like five times where Godzilla's there, and it's like it's, it's about to go down, and someone says something where it's just like, you know, let's, you know, you know like Ken Watanabe, I think one of the trailers, he's like, oh, you know, let them fight or whatever, and... It cuts. Like, it's just like, yeah, you know, shit's about to go down and everything. Oh, news report. Oh, look how devastating that was. I bet you wish you saw it. Uh, you know, this city is just fucking gone, dude. You should have seen this throwdown. I mean, it was just like, whoa. Godzilla was, like, doing stuff. And, you know, it's just... It, it was kind of like that. It was kind of like as soon as something was about to get going, it would cut. A door would close. It was, you know... It pulled that kind of stuff, and, um, I don't know how to feel about it. I like that I was teased a couple times. I started to get pissed off, but I do not consider that a criticism of the movie. The movie was teasing. There's nothing wrong with that, and I personally have a problem with it. I personally got annoyed by it, but I don't consider that. That's a very biased, you know, perspective. I'm not a biased reviewer. So, I don't consider that a flaw with the movie, it's just something that might bother you as well. Unless you know going in that you're going to get teased, so it's fine. Once the action really gets going and they start throwing down, it's all good, it's all fine. You don't have to worry about it. Oh, excuse me, cutting away too much. Okay, so, now I'm going to talk about spoilers. So, if you haven't seen the movie, uh, do not, you know, watch the rest of the video. I'm going to spoil stuff. So, yeah. There's two other monsters in this movie. They're both called uh, Muto. And I like their design. They're very cool. One of them can fly, kind of reminiscent of Rodan. The other one's just really big, around Godzilla's size. And as far as all that goes, I mean, they were cool. Like I said, cool design. They had, you know, like EMP powers and everything. And I like that they weren't just monsters there to destroy things. I like that they had a goal. They were like a species that were doing something. Like they were doing like a, a life cycle, basically. They were trying to have kids. And I thought that was really, you know, cool. I thought that was really nice. You know, you see them join together and they snuggle their faces and everything. And I'm not saying it's like adorable or anything, but... They were, you know, they were fine in the movie. They they weren't just monsters there to destroy stuff. They actually had a goal in mind. When their babies are in trouble, they actually run over to go see what's wrong. It's just, yeah, it's very well done as far as the monsters go. They had more depth than just, rah, we're going to crush everything. So, yeah, they were really cool. And Godzilla in the movie, I mean, the atomic breath, I mean, like, the atomic breath. I mean, let's just be real here. You see the tail light up. You know what's coming. You see it go all the way up his spines. He shoots it. It's badass. Uh, the scene where he slams the male one into the building with his tail and kills it. Uh, the second, I think he uses the atomic breath. Uh, definitely, he uses it at least three times in the movie. Maybe just twice. But the second time he uses it, 
Oh my god, dude. Because I see him holding open the female's mouth, and I'm like, oh, he's gonna, like, do the King Kong jaw rip, and that's gonna be cool. But then he does the atomic breath down its throat, like, just straight up, boom. And I was like, oh my god, like, the kid in you comes out. And just as a Godzilla fan, there's all these cool moments, like, like there's, like, this Japanese monster movie poster in the earlier beginning of the movie. Little, like, origami things that kind of look like, you know, it was just, it, you know, the beginning of the movie takes place in Japan. You know, when they're fucking up San Francisco at the end of the movie, there's, like, this really cool uh, scene where the male lands on a pagoda and kind of destroys it a little bit. Because if you don't know, uh, every single Japanese Godzilla movie outside of, I think, the first one, maybe even the first one, but outside of the first one, I think starting from the second, a pagoda gets destroyed in every single Godzilla movie. It's just kind of like a running thing, and this movie had that, so when I saw that, that was really awesome. And, you know, and Godzilla gets up at the end, he roars, and he goes back into the ocean. Just classic Godzilla ending. This was a Godzilla movie through and through, and I loved it. Uh, now we'll talk about uh, a negative to the movie that's a spoiler, and it's my only big problem with the movie, but it's not enough to take the review down. Again, it's a very biased uh, opinion. It's not really about the review, it's just kind of like my own personal gripe. Brian Cranston dying in the movie as early as he did, to me, was a little ridiculous. I thought his character was so much more interesting, so much more sympathetic, and just he just gave such a great performance, and then to pass it over to his son, it was just like... Eh? Like, he was so much better. Like, why couldn't he have been in the movie throughout? Why did he have to die and pass it on to his son, who is a much more boring character? I mean, like I said, uh, Kick-Ass gives a great performance in the movie, and the character is okay, but compared to Brian Cranston, it's a downgrade. It's like you wasted him pretty. You wasted that actor. Unless they can find a way to bring him back. Like, oh, they faked his death because nobody can know he's alive because they want him doing, like, top-secret research on shit and stuff, and that'd be actually kind of interesting. Um, but I doubt they'll bring him back. I doubt they'll say he faked his death for whatever purpose. I think they just killed him off, and they wasted a great actor. But, again, you gotta review a movie for what it is. You know, I can't say he should have been the star. I can't say he should have been this, should have been that. That's not reviewing for what the movie for what it is. That's reviewing it for what I wanted it to be. For what it is, it's a great movie. Um, yeah, so I just think it's great. I mean, I when I was coming out of it, I was a little, I had this little hint of disappointment in me because there wasn't as much Godzilla as I thought there'd be. But once you get past that, you know, I thought it was good, and then I kept reflecting on it. And you know what? I think this is a great movie. Uh, at the very least, it's good. You know, it's a good. It's between good and great, and. I'm going to be giving Godzilla an 8.5 out of 10. Uh, I highly recommend you go see it uh, again, because if you're watching this spoiler section, then you have seen it, but I recommend seeing it again. Make sure this movie makes money, because we want to get a sequel where Godzilla can do even more badass stuff. So, yeah. Thanks for watching my review of Godzilla. Uh, I will talk to you guys later in my next review. Probably not going to be X-Men Days of Future Past. I really don't think I'm going to see that movie for a couple of reasons uh, that I'm not going to get into in this video, but I don't think I'll be seeing that movie. So, uh, maybe the new Tom Cruise movie, uh, Edge of Tomorrow. That looks kind of interesting, uh, kind of up my alley. Uh, and, but if not that, I think probably August with Guardians of the Galaxy, honestly. So now that I'm kind of... If I do have a drought of movie reviews up until August, I'm going to try to get back into like the Adventure Time stuff probably doing like three episodes in a video because it's just too slow doing one at a time and yeah so thanks for watching i will talk to you guys later bye